good hard day. Uh, Jeff Hireman had surgery on his foot. Uh, what it was is a sne uh, sprain, and, and uh, I don't want to get too technical because I usually screw those things up, but it's a six week in a cast slash boot, and we should have him ready to go full speed by June. So that's three guys that are, we're dealing with that uh, Jeff didn't need as many reps, but we lost Jalen and we lost Von Bell, but the positive is that they're all back uh, fairly early too. You know, sometimes you lose that summer training, which is terrible. Uh, Curtis Samuel had a really good day today. Like, really good day. Don't know which way right or left is yet, but he plays fast, plays hard, doing the things we asked. And uh, defense got the better offense today. You know, we call it second and long period. So you put the ball down second and 12, second and 13, second and 10. And the objective of the offense, obviously, is to get back in a manageable third down. Mm -hmm. And the defense is responsible not to let you get there. So it's just another, we do a lot of, uh, teaching situations in spring like most people do, but I just thought that's interesting for you guys. Any questions? Josh, front row. Or you mentioned, I think, at the start of this, you prefer to have a blue-color team with Hungry. You're about halfway through spring, a little bit more than halfway through. Do you feel like you have that one and two? Do you think you guys have made progress to address the areas that of the need that kind of led to last season and the two losses at the end of the season? Yeah, we've addre addressed that. I, I can't imagine addressing that harder. And uh, some people might say, well, did you address the fact in past defense we have? But that wasn't number one. Number one is that the culture that I, I felt that I slipped as far as demanding and, and teaching the culture that we want. And the culture is not playing scared, timid, and soft. It's if you're going to make a mistake, you make it every four to, you're here four to six and A to B. So I, I, I don't know if I've ever addressed it as hard as I have this off season. And, uh, Certainly, we have addressed pass defense, but that wasn't, you can't, that's too easy. Pass defense is where it wasn't very good. No, there's more, it's more complicated than that. Those two things go hand in hand, blue collar, hungry, and not playing too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very hard to get all three in the one, uh, one football team. That's where there's very few great teams. There's a bunch of good teams, but great teams have those characteristics. I've had a couple, I've, had, I've been around a couple of those teams. I don't feel that at all. Um, what I do feel is that uh, I've always been a pro student. You know, students should get more than what they get. It's, it gets so complicated, though, and I'm so focused on our team. I have not. I read a little bit of it. I've watched it when it comes on. But to say I've immersed myself in the, that situation, I haven't. But I've always been, you know, things like students, athletes, parents should come on visits. And they should have to pay for it. They should get a stipend. You know, there should not be the... But to say that they can go out and get their own shoe contracts or those kind of things, you know, I start hearing that. I'm like, well, what, what would that do for this great sport? And really, what would that do for college athletics and as a whole? So I, I don't know a whole lot. And I, I imagine after spring, I'll hear more. I think it's a great rule. What do you mean? Yeah, the mandated means with us. A quarterback can't play college football at a high, high level with 20 hours per week. But he's got to do on his own. I think it's a great rule. I think, uh, you know, but that means a lot of that's why they have iPads. That's why they, you know, kids can decide, players just like coaches can decide to be great. If they're watching mm -hmm. the hour clock, the, you know, if they're punching their clock and saying, I'm done 20 hours, then you probably got a pretty average player there. But I, I think, you know, the coaches are, you know, they created that rule. You give us 40 hours, we're going to keep it for 40 hours. And they still got to take care of their academics. So I have no problem with that rule. It's, it's not. It's, uh, it's in that area. But Liz Frank does this, and it's not. Far but it, it's, it's in that area. Far left, Matt. Yeah, it's just once again, I, I don't want to start giving out names. I know that's that's makes good articles and conversation, but it's, I, it's we're only eight into it, and uh, 
you know, you've heard about Darren Lee. You know, Chris Riley's doing a nice job. Cam Cambrough's doing a nice job. And, like, you know, uh, Josh Perry's turned into an Ohio State linebacker about. He's not quite there yet. Uh, the offense line I'm concerned about. You know, you need it. You know, I keep looking for Muhort Lindsley and, and Hall and Norwell, and they're not out there anymore. And uh, and then you have Braxton and Hireman out, so it's not a it's, uh, depleted offense right now. I guess so. Yeah, they were, I mean, up to, he got me on a bad day because Cardell was bad today. And when I say bad, real bad. But to the point coming up till today, he was our, one of our most improved players on our team. So I'm not, that's spring ball. That's, you're going to have a bad day. We got to get those out of him before next fall. But he's, he's clearly the number two. Middle, all right. Saturday, they lost. So, uh, yeah, the first one they won, the second one they lost, and then today wasn't win or lose a day. Uh, I'm seeing, the, you know, I'm seeing the culture and the coaches uh, following the culture. Um, that all, you know, we're just so early into it, you know. But I, I do, I, I see improvement in the areas that we're emphasizing right now, and that's getting to the ball and simplifying things. Front row, Tim. Yeah, a couple. Uh, Urban. What Taylor Decker is he? Is he being that that lead uh, duck you want? I mean, for that offensive group, and like, what do you see out of him specifically, or have you seen much? Of him? Yeah, yeah, big, uh, big time. Until today, it was a bad day, and Taylor was part of the bad day syndrome. So uh, up to that point, very impressed with what he's done. Leadership, toughness, doing all the things that uh, that previous group did, but today was not a good day. So was it because of the wind? I mean, you guys were outside, then you came in, right? Yeah. I mean, did the wind kind of screw? I mean, did it change? Yeah. What, how would you describe what happened there? Um, I don't want to say soft because he's not soft, but players that allow the peripheral stuff to get into your, you know, focus tends to issue, you know, and that I, I think, and our coach Marty talked to our team about that. He saw some, you know, that wouldn't affect Jack Muir, but he probably did as a sophomore. And Taylor's still a sophomore right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a bad day, and there's, there's more. And the guys across the line of scrimmage are pretty good. You know, blocking Joey both all day is not not easy, and Joey got the best of them today. And the other thing, because we may not see you until late next week, or whatever, uh, you, you decided to go with your coaches' convention or clinic this year. You've honored some guys and stuff like that. What's just sort of behind that? Uh, you bring in yeah. the two pro coaches. Yeah, I just uh, it was just one of those. Walk I was either on a walk or somewhere, and I just started thinking about the great state of Ohio, and and uh, I think people sometimes forget. That you know, this is the birthplace of foot, you know Canton and Maslin. You know, where you start talking about the birthplace of football, then two pro sports, and we have two great coaches. Marv Lewis is a great friend. I actually know Mike Petton from when he was a high school coach as well. And I don't know if everyone's ever done that. We're going to have uh, Larry Karras come down, arguably one of the greatest coaches of all time. We have uh, other great high school coaches we're celebrating. We're going to uh, obviously uh, uh, Paul Brown. You know, uh, we're going to honor him and his family for what he did for the great state of Ohio. So when you start looking at it, and our friend uh, Mr. Parks is working on a, you know, doing a little history lesson for us, it's really overwhelming. And it's really my obligation and all of ours to, uh, to celebrate Ohio football. So both coaches are here for the pros, and we're inviting uh, not only high schools, but local grade schools. And, you know, if you're coaching Ohio, come and uh, celebrate the great state. And the great tradition of Ohio football. Back row, Lori. You know, one thing, another thing, just about the great state. You know, my, I played high school, played college, and my son's getting ready to play high school football in state. That's another reason I just kept thinking how proud I am that a kid's going to be playing high school football in Ohio. I'm sorry. Well, we're, we're uh, I'll go ahead and tell you what we're doing. We're doing uh, something called unit leadership, and that's uh, we're, I've taken the approach last year this time where players are going through leadership training. And this time, this last four weeks, our coaches have been. So once or twice a week, we go on a leadership seminar. And uh, once again, Tim Kite teaches it, and we're teaching people to be unit leaders. And uh, in the month of May, we're going to go attack the team then.
and that's where we put. So we got a real cool systematic approach to how we're going to fix this thing. And it's not broke. It's just we got to, to we didn't we didn't finish the chase. So. Front row, Austin. Last question. Urban, you, you mentioned those injuries at the top. Does it seem like that number is high for the for spring, uh, or is it just maybe the nature that the starter at tight end, the starter at safety, just? No, I'm just because uh, I have talked to a lot of my colleagues, and you know, I'm glad it's not a bad one. You know, right now we're good. You know, I think Von Bell and I think Jalen's the one. Because he was really making a move, and uh, he got hurt. You know, he's making a move in a classroom, and just you know, the typical freshman looks like it left his system. And then to see him grab his ankle or whatever, uh, what would he do? Jalen had a knee. Oh, cartilage. That's right. He had a scope knee. And the same with Von Bell. You know, those, that's the. You know, Jeff's going to be fine. I think it's probably right about what normal people, normal school, uh, the normal number of injuries. Not now. You weren't positioned to absorb that loss even for a little bit. No, Nick Vanette's done very well. One of our most improved players, and Marcus Ball actually has had some good days. Today, not being one of them. So, so bad day was it today? Tuesday, bad day Tuesday. Got to make sure there's no bad day Thursday. All right, guys, thank you.